Hello friends, my name is Dr. Ashish Goyal and on this channel I bring you tips and tricks to approach common medical problems, conduct better medical research, write your papers and pass exams in flying colors. In today's session, we are going to discuss a quick and simple approach to monoarthritis and oligoarthritis. I hope you will find this session helpful. In the next five minutes, I will present to you a flowchart or an algorithm which you can apply to your patients very easily and quickly. When a patient comes to you with joint pains, which is restricted to one, two, three or four joints, it's called a monoarthritis or an oligoarthritis. And these are the questions that you can ask them sequentially and arrive at the correct or a possible differential diagnosis. The first question that we ask is, is it really arthritis? Once you are sure that it is arthritis, the next question or usually the first question to ask in a case of arthritis is how many joints are involved? If the answer is one, you are dealing with a monoarthritis. If the answer is two to four, you are dealing with an oligoarthritis. If the answer is more than four, you are dealing with a polyarthritis, which gives a completely different algorithm. But if you are dealing with one, then the next question you ask, is it inflammatory and is it acute? If you get the answer no, then you are largely dealing with an osteoarthritis or a degenerative arthritis, which is non-inflammatory in nature. If the answer in other ways is yes, and obviously you are dealing with an acute inflammatory monoarthritis. Next question you ask is which joint is involved? Is it the upper limb or the lower limb? Was there an evidence of recent infection? And what are the extra articular features? So if you get an answer that it's the lower limb which is involved, you have a recent sexually transmitted disease evidence or you have an evidence of a recent gastroenteritis and you have a patient who can't see, who can't pee and who can't climb a tree because of his lower limb involvement, then you are dealing with a reactive arthritis. Supposing you get the background of a tubercular illness, you do start thinking of a tubercular involvement or a tubercular arthritis. If you have evidence of a single joint involvement, you start your algorithm with a septic arthritis and you want to rule it out because it damages the joint permanently if you do not treat it very quickly. If you specifically find that the lower limb and the great toe of the person is involved and you do definitely start thinking of a gout. If you have an oligoarthritis, you again ask the same question, is it acute, is it inflammatory? If you get the answer yes, you are dealing with an acute inflammatory oligoarthritis. You ask the questions, is it symmetric? What is the distribution? Is it preferentially involving the upper limb or is it involving the lower limb? What are the extra articular features? Once again, if you find that the great toe is involved, if you find that the uric acid is increased, if you find that the joint aspirate has crystals of monosodium urate, then you are dealing with gout. If you find that there are nail and skin changes, which are typically characteristic of psoriasis, then you are dealing with the psoriatic arthritis. And if you find that the axial skeleton is involved, the spine is involved, the person has a lower backache, most involvement is below the waist, the sacroiliac joints are involved, and HLA B27 is positive, then you start thinking of seronegative spondyloarthropathies, which is a group which includes ankylosing spondylitis, reactive arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, and inflammatory bowel disease. So with this, we come to an end of today's presentation, and I hope that this will be helpful to you. Thank you very much for watching.